Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is January the 18th, 2020. Let's talk AFC and NFC championship games in the NFL. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, in my favorites folder, you'll see a video I did months ago where I was encouraging people to take the San Francisco 49ers as a futures play at 22 to 1. Right? If you grab them then, if you looked at my video from last week where I was encouraging people to take the Green Bay Packers at a plus 850 to win it all, to that crowd, I say, look, just equalize the expected payment knowing that you're looking at, right, the winner of the NFC Championship game still having the risk of playing in the Super Bowl, right? Just do hedging at this point. At these lines, you don't want to take on extra risk, right? In the AFC, I was urging people, rather than take KC last week, to take KC at a plus 350 to win it all. Understand, KC is now hosting the AFC Championship game, right? So my point to you is, in the AFC, for example, since you already have KC, if you've been following my videos, right, you want to throw a little bit at 7 to 1 just for strategic betting purposes, not because you think they're going to win the game. Just to be covered for all contingencies, you want to throw a little on the Tennessee Titans, right? That's the way I'm playing the AFC and NFC championship games, right? Let me also point out, too, for the record, understand I had other futures plays that were not successful, right? The New England Patriots were the team I thought would come out of the AFC. But with futures, you get such a huge margin if you time it correctly, San Francisco at 22 to 1, that it gives you enough to survive the losses and to still get leverage in this, the championship uh, round uh, pre Super Bowl. Now, let me go one step further. Years ago, I was here online and I talked about buying rounds. Right? I stopped because too many people would contact me with an attitude. I'm not kidding. And they would say, look, I talked with someone at my local casino. And they said, you can't buy rounds. Right? Uh, you can't buy points. You don't know what you're talking about. That's an impossibility. Right? Well, let me just say, the seven and a half point line in both games is problematical, right? Right now, today, and you need to check the legality of this website in your jurisdiction. Understand, all the risk is on you. I'm just telling you one betting shop that today allows you to buy points, and that's bovada.lv, right? Understand, if you're buying points, if you're taking a seven and a half point line down to seven, if you're going to do that, you're going to give up some of your rate of return, right? This is not Christmas. You have to pay to play. But just understand right now at bovada.lv, they offer you the option of buying points, right? Shop around. They're not the only shop, right? Please do not contact me claiming, oh, my casino said... If your casino doesn't allow you to buy points, then you're betting in the wrong venue, right? Just understand, it's 2020. I expect everyone to know that if you shop around long enough, you'll actually find a place like bovada.lv that allows you to buy points. Now, in the games, let me just say this. The teams I expect to win, starting in the NFC, Right? I expect the San Francisco 49ers to beat 
the Green Bay Packers. Right? Let me repeat that. I expect the Niners to beat the Green Bay Packers. I think the line's a bit too rich. I'm not going to play games with the point spread. Just on a money line play, I think the favorite is a favorite for a reason. Let me say this. That Niner pass rush is ferocious. It is ferocious. Boza is the real deal. This is not the team from last year. San Francisco also has fast linebackers. I believe Green Bay, good team, very good team. But Green Bay is a bit of an illusion, right? Last week, they beat Seattle. I understand many people on Green Bay were sick. But understand that Seattle was not that good of a defense, right? They, they simply weren't, folks. In terms of points scored and points allowed during the regular season this year, Seattle only had a plus seven point differential on the year. That's less than half a point more per week in terms of more points scored than given up. Let me also say, too, that um, Green Bay this year, despite 13 wins, got out gained yardage-wise on the year versus their opponents. Think about it. A 13-win team where the opponents outgained them on average. Right? Let me also say that Green Bay had an easier schedule than the Niners this year. Understand, the Niners had to play Seattle twice. Let me also say, and the Rams twice. So, looking at this, and I understand it's an Aaron Rodgers homecoming, it's a Devontae Adams, Palo Alto High School homecoming. Right? What I want people to consider, and I understand too, that this is going to be the second time Aaron Rodgers sees this San Francisco defense, and that the first time, right, the first time, San Francisco relied a bit too much on George Kittle, the tight end, to get them over the hump. Right? You look at that box score and you wonder what would have happened had Green Bay stopped George Kittle, which Green Bay was unable to do. But as you look at the box score, I also want you to see the problems Aaron Rodgers had the first time around against this Niner defense. Let me say, too, some quarterbacks strike me as emotional. They get caught up in the minute. Right there. Emotions can determine how they play. Jimmy Garoppolo is not that guy. Jimmy Garoppolo is a math guy with a short memory, right? He's the three-point shooter who can miss three, four open shots and not have it affect his willingness to take the next shot. I'm in the Bay Area. I've watched several Niner games this year. The one thing I could tell you about Jimmy Garoppolo is that he is resilient. Even though this is going to be his second playoff game. And Aaron Rodgers, of course, has been in more conference championship games than Garoppolo has been in playoff games. I'm just telling you that Garoppolo is not going to be afraid to throw it over the middle of the field. I'm just telling you that if Jimmy Garoppolo throws an interception and he had a disastrous preseason game where he was throwing multiple interceptions, he's not going to be gun shy. He's not going to be overcome by the moment. The Niners personnel wise are just much better than the Green Bay Packers. So here, what I want people to consider to get value here is to take advantage of the increased odds you're getting because of the increased risks. 
in picking a Niner right now to be Super Bowl MVP. Right, right now, if you shop around on places like intertops.eu, for example, right, and again, the responsibility is all yours to determine the legality of that betting shop in your local jurisdiction. You're going to see that right now you can get a key person at 16 to 1 odds. Right? We're trying to get leverage on the casino. 16 to 1 odds to be Super Bowl MVP. So if you're like me, and if you feel that the San Francisco 49ers are going to beat Green Bay, today, it's the Saturday before the NFC Championship game. Today, you can get 16 to 1 odds on George Kittle, pro bowler, one of the best in the sport at his position, to be Super Bowl MVP. He's the tight end who had over 100 yards, well over 100 yards, against Green Bay when these two teams played in the regular season. He's the tight end who made the key catch in a key game, San Francisco's victory over the New Orleans Saints during the regular season. George Kittle is a favorite, we'll call him, of Niner quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. He's a key part of the Niner offense. More importantly, right, at running back, the Niners use a committee. There's really only one dominant tight end on the Niners. He's the Niner equivalent of KC's Travis Kelsey. But I need for you to understand the risk involved on the front end. If the Niners don't beat Green Bay, you lose this bet. You don't even get to the Super Bowl. Understand my hedging philosophy too. I want to get the 16-1 to odds on Kittle. Then if the Niners get to the Super Bowl, at that point I can say, okay, let me pick some other Niners. Let me pick Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> right? If I really want to go out on a limb, let me pick Richard Sherman, who's been dominant lately. And who's known. Understand too, to be Super Bowl MVP... You really have to be already in the public imagination. I know guys like Larry Brown have won Super Bowl MVPs. The Super Bowl MVP list does contain some one-game wonders, guys who showed up and were dominant for that game. But that's the exception, not the rule. More times than not, the MVP is a recognition of the winning team's key player, I know what that player has done before the Super Bowl isn't supposed to matter, but it does. Right? And so Kittle, and I'm sure whoever gets into the Super Bowl from the AFC is going to be targeting Kittle with provocative defensive sets. Just understand that Kyle Shanahan the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers is one of the most innovative offensive minds. He's from the offensive side of the football. And I'm sure the Niners are going to find a way to move Kittle all over the field should they get to the Super Bowl. So, in addition to predicting that the Niners beat Green Bay, and in telling people, look, if you're going to bet the point spread, right, you might want to consider buying points if the best line you can get is seven and a half right now right i think the line's a bit rich if i had to pick a point spread play here it'd probably be green bay plus seven and a half i wouldn't consider taking the niners at anything above seven right food for thought but the play i'm recommending here other than the Niners simply to win on a money line, is that people consider, at least I'll just tell you what I'm doing, right? I've taken George Kittle at a plus 1,600 to be MVP of the Super Bowl. Shop around for that prop. Let's talk about the AFC, right? You know what? 
I agree with Clay Travis. This run by the Titans is historical. It's simply historical. Right? They beat New England in New England. They follow that up after beating the two seed in the two seeds place. They follow that up by beating the one seed in Baltimore. Now they have one more game between them and the Super Bowl. It's the three seed in Kansas City. Let me also say, too, this team is scary because they were two and four at one point. Two and four. So now they're something like 11 and seven. Right? Think about it. So then you realize, my God, that's nine and three. Is this really the lower seeded team? Nine and three over their last 12 games, folks. Not just the leading rusher in Derrick Henry, but Tennessee also has the quarterback rating leader from this year and Ryan Tannehill. Let me say this too. I know. People are going to say, well, Tannehill didn't even throw for 100 yards in either of the last two games. Folks, Tannehill's a gifted passer. Him not throwing is coaching. Has anyone figured out that Mike Vrabel is doing an A-plus job right now? Also, aren't you concerned that Tannehill, a former position player, I think he was a wide receiver, when he needs to run, is actually an above-average athlete at the position. Right? I think the seven and a half here is too rich. It's too rich. If you're a KC person, I personally wouldn't give seven and a half points to the Tennessee Titans. I like the Titans on the spread. Now that said, I think KC wins the AFC. I like KC to win the game. The problem with the Titans is that if KC, who has an excellent home field advantage, right? I know they had a rough stretch when Mahomes was banged up in the middle of the year. I know the Texans beat KC and KC during the regular season, for example. You saw how KC handled that in their last game, in the postseason, right? But just to understand, KC has a rich football culture, right? That community has held together. This isn't the Los Angeles Coliseum, folks. This is Arrowhead. It's a different animal entirely. The crowd is going to be amped up. More importantly, you have an absolutely explosive offense, right? Let's remember, Mahomes was the MVP last year. As you were watching last week's games, you noticed that when Mahomes wasn't hitting Travis Kelsey, right? One of the gold standards at tight end in football these days. He was able to hit people like Sammy Watkins. You notice Sammy Watkins was still out there. Understand, this team's so deep, guys like Shady McCoy are on the roster. Right? Tyreek Hill. In other words, this team is diversified. It's very hard to key on one big offensive talent. And Mahomes spreads the ball around. He's not a quarterback who relies on one wide receiver. Well, the problem here is that if Kansas City gets out the gate fast and scores points in bunches, as they have in many games, that might take Tennessee out of its pacing. That might pull Tennessee away from Derrick Henry. You can't run the ball a lot when you're down by double digits early. Understand, too, the secret sauce to KC, as good as their offense has been, has actually been the play of their defense. Now, we have kind of 
gotten away from that in the public commentary after Houston was up 24 nothing. But Casey's defense has actually been playing exemplary football the last month. Right? The offense is starting to match the defense. Right? So, I believe KC beats Tennessee. Right? One of the problems I have with Tennessee are the great numbers on offense, other than their point total that the Baltimore Ravens had last week against Tennessee. Right? Tennessee's defense, I would argue, is not playing exemplary ball. The last two games have really been won on pacing and time of possession. So I expect Kansas City to win this game. But to me, the point spread is too risky to play. I like KC on a money line if you took my earlier advice and have KC already at a plus 350 to win the Super Bowl. Then because of already having that position, you might want to consider evening it out a bit with some on Tennessee at plus 7-1 to one to win the Super Bowl. This way you're guaranteed the AFC winner. But the bet that intrigues me isn't who wins the game. And as I've said, I think KC wins the game. The bet that intrigues me is the Super Bowl MVP prop. Now here again, understand if KC loses this game, you lose this bet. We're swinging for the fences because we want leverage. I need to have huge leverage on some picks so I could then take risks on others. Would it surprise you to know that right now, on sites like intertops.eu, for example, you can get 20 to 1 odds. You heard me right. 20 to 1 odds on Travis Kelsey, huge part of KC's offense, to be Super Bowl MVP. Right? Travis Kelsey at 20 to 1. Just understand that Travis Kelsey is iconic as a Kansas City Chief. He almost certainly is a future NFL Hall of Famer. He's this generation's Jimmy Graham, right? Who ironically is playing for the Green Bay Packers in the NFC Championship game, right? If they're going to give an MVP of the Super Bowl to a Kansas City Chief, and they're going to pick someone who's high profile, right? I believe it's Kelsey or Pat Mahomes. Unless, of course, some other guy emerges with a monster game, right? Tyreek Hill, that's a distinct possibility. Maybe Sammy Watkins, right? Who's so highly thought of, he's one of the highest paid receivers in the National Football League, and people don't even think of him as one of the primary weapons in Kansas City's offense, right? Just understand, you want to be ahead of the crowd. You want to be thinking about Super Bowl MVP this week. Right? I think the home team here is just too much for the Titans. I'll agree, the Titans are not the same team that they were in September. I'll agree with that 100%. I'll also agree that I haven't seen this combination of offensive line and running back with this level of success in quite some time. Derrick Henry running behind this Titan line is reminiscent to me of Eric Dickerson running behind Jackie Slater and the Los Angeles Ram line, right? Derrick Henry's a north-south runner. He's not an east-west runner like Barry Sanders. This really is a different type of back, right? He's an Earl Campbell type back. He's an Eric Dickerson type back. Very high efficiency, a workhorse that you could feed the ball to many times, the kind of running back that, quite frankly, can carry a team. I just feel that the Kansas City Chiefs 
are too loaded, offensively and defensively. Right? Now, while it's true that teams that put up more than 40 points the week before tend to drop precipitously in their point output the following week, Right? I just get the feeling that Kansas City, based on what they've been through, right, last year, at home, AFC Championship game, it goes to overtime. Mahomes never sees the ball. Last week, at home, down by 24 against a team that beat them at home in the regular season. I just get the feeling that this Kansas City Chief team has the experience, has the scar tissue, quite frankly, to be able to put up excellent offensive performances back to back. I don't believe this is the team that explodes one week and then gets complacent and lets it slip away the next week. I think this is a team that feels that they were the best team in the AFC last year with the MVP and got outthought early and late, right? Outthought early and then in overtime by Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, right? Had an unfortunate D Ford offsides, hurt them. I think because of that memory and the memory last week of being down 24 nothing. I think this Kansas City team is going to stay focused, right? I know there's some question about Andy Reid in conference championship games, right, folks? I believe because of all the heartache recently, I think the players are going to carry Coach Reid through this one. I like Kansas City to win the AFC the way I'm playing it, though, because I want leverage that I can play with later. I already have, as you know, KC at plus 350 to win it all. The way I'm playing it is to take Travis Kelsey here at 20 to 1 odds to be Super Bowl MVP. Understand, next week, I can look at all the options on Super Bowl MVP, knowing the teams in the Super Bowl, and I can then fine-tune my Super Bowl MVP selection with the understanding that some lesser known player, a Larry Brown type, could easily make a couple of plays, pick sixes, things like that, key stops, and win the award over the bigger names. But in the 49er game, I think the best play out there is George Kittle at 16 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. It's a futures play. And I believe in the Chief game, the best play out there is Travis Kelsey at 20 to 1. To win the Super Bowl. Keep in mind, too, the Super Bowl is going to be in Florida. Not in cold weather, but in warm weather. Right? The tight ends in that game should be showcased. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Again, that 22 to 1 recommendation for San Francisco made months ago is in my favorites folder. Here on YouTube, you could go back and watch that video yourself. Right? Let me hear from you. If you see these games differently, if you see other prop plays that you feel fellow gamblers here online should hear about and know about, if you have your own YouTube channel and you want to direct people who have watched my videos to your YouTube channel, I don't even have a problem with that, then I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video. Right, And if this video is on Instagram, Please feel free to leave the comments that you want to in the comment section there. Thanks for stopping by.